So thank you to Martin. Martin, uh, KDE's most famous Quinn developer. In fact, the lead Quinn developer, I should say. Um, this talk is going to be about KDE Neon. Um, it's a relatively new thing. Who, who here already knows a bit about KDE Neon? All right, so fair number. That's good. Um, it's like a microphone with a cable. It's like in the 80s. Next thing you know, I'm gallivanting around the stage. Um, my name uh, is Harold Sitter. I am a KDE developer. I work for a company called Blue Systems, and we do primarily KDE things. Um, Blue Systems invests very heavily in KDE, and one of the projects it sponsors is KDE Neon. So what is a Neon then? Well, Neon is a noble gas. It is a noble gas that is primarily known for neon lights, uh, very lovely lights that are created by sending energy through ionized gas, a plasma. But let's start at the beginning. What is KDE? So this is KDE, these are lovely people. Um, KDE is a community. If you have been around in the Linux community for a while, you might also know it as a bit of software, except it's not, it's a community now. And a very good one at that. Look at all the lovely people in that picture there at our annual conference um, academy last year. Um, it was in Spain. And this year it's going to be in Berlin, so if you are around, um, I think it's in September. Uh, if you are around in Berlin in September, you might want to come to CuteCon, which is the overarching event where that is, where that is being held. Um, KD is a community whose vision it is to bring the entire world um, freedom and privacy in the digital life. The primary way we do this is through software, obviously enough. And one key component of this software is called Plasma. Plasma is this lovely thing here. It is uh, one of the main Linux desktop environments, if you will. Um, everyone knows Plasma, I presume? Who doesn't know Plasma? Lovely. Really? But, oh, come on. <laughs> Fair enough. So that's Plasma. It's, it's really gorgeous. Look at the colors. It's, oh. Mm. But we're also doing other software. We're doing weird tennis ball sort of things. Um, this is marble. It's our desktop globe, I think we call it. Uh, it's basically a competitive product to Google Earth, and it's using free map material to render a, a 3D globe of whatever you want. Uh, street maps through open street maps, or like this, just a random uh, relief view. We also do perhaps weird things. We create an army of potato people using k tubeling which is a game for toddlers, I would like to say. Um, I think occasionally you might also find a developer playing with it, because why not? So we've got a widespread in the software area, but we're also doing non-software things. One of the primary areas where we do this is um, a new project called wiki to learn um, It's basically a media wiki platform that enables students and teachers in academia to share um, all sorts of materials regarding teaching and learning. And it's basically a resource for uh, free information sharing, if you will. The bloody cat is... Oh. So, okay, so... Now we know what KDE is, um, we know it does software and not software, so what is a Neon? Uh, same thing again, now that's confusing, isn't it? So um, this is actually a picture of Neon, confusingly enough, it's also a picture of Plasma. So maybe it's a Neon Plasma, I don't know. Uh, Wikipedia had to say the following, Neon Plasma has the most intense light discharge at normal voltages and currents of all the noble gases, meaning it must be very bright which is what Neon is. And that brings us to the meat. Neon is a project that seeks to get KDE software to the users in as quick a time frame as possible. 
Now, KDE Neon started as a project. Um, the idea of it probably happened last year in, in, in Los Angeles, where Jonathan Riddle, a colleague of mine, um, and I found ourselves wondering where we want to go in life. At the time, we were both Kubuntu developers. Um, you probably all heard of Kubuntu. It's an Ubuntu version with KDE's software on top. And we found ourselves wondering, well, where, where do we want to go with all of this? Where do we want to go with software? Where do we want to see the Linux desktop? Where do we want to see KDE users get the best possible KDE experience? And we found that the way we, we, we did it in Kubuntu was not necessarily the best sort of approach. Um, Kubuntu is, of course, a distribution. It is a distribution that is part of an ecosystem of many, many, many distributions of many stakeholders that all want their different things. Now, the GNOME camp wants the thing, and the KDE camp wants the thing, and the X-Phase camp wants the thing, and you somehow have to fit all of that under the same hat that is your distribution. And, that, and that, that's tricky, and it's exhausting, and it means compromise. It always means compromise. There is no distribution I have ever encountered where there didn't happen compromise on some level. And we were fairly disgruntled with that entire idea of having to care about other people's software if, or rather considering that we find KDE software to be vastly superior to all the other software out there anyway, bearing a couple of exceptions. Browsers. So we came up with KDE Neon. KDE Neon is a Linux binary project, which doesn't really mean anything, I suppose. It is based on stable foundations, which also doesn't mean anything. It is a rolling workspace, namely Plasma, which also doesn't mean anything. And it is focused on KDE software, which really means everything. In KDE Neon, this is essentially the entire mission of KDE Neon. If we get this right, then it's going to be awesome. And the way we achieve this depends largely on what is available at the time. So we, we kind of, for, for Plasma, in order, in order for Plasma to work, we need Linux. Now there is not one Linux, so we need a base system that we can build Plasma on top. And then on top of that, we can provide all the applications from the weird tennis ball applications that are globes to the army of potato people. And we want to do that, and so those are our requirements, and that's what we came up with. So we took Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, uh, which is a long-term support release, which means it's gonna be released, uh, it's gonna be supported for the next two years until the next version comes out, actually longer than that. And on top of that, we stacked all the necessary bits that we needed in order to provide the best plasma experience. Now this is all fairly limited to Plasma. Basically, the only reason we even have this Ubuntu base is because there is no one Linux, which is a bit of a troublesome issue to begin with, but uh, something we need to deal with. So we took that because it seemed the best fit at the time. If you have a question as to why exactly we uh, chose uh, this particular base, please ask a question at the end because it's a lengthy explanation. Um, KD Neon comes in two editions. One is the user edition, the other is the developer edition. The developer edition additionally has two sort of release modes. So let's start with a look at the, the user edition. The user edition is, as the name suggests, very much targeting users. It is released software, it is hopefully very stable software, it is software that is built from the release tables. So this is probably the closest version of Neon you would find to a traditional Linux system. Um, and it's targeting the sort of person who likes to have up-to-date KDE software, but not necessarily broken one. Unlike the developer editions, where the stable version essentially is the, the, the stable incarnation of whatever KDE software there is, but it's still a build from, essentially, from Git. It is the, you know, the, the daily build, as it were. And the same for unstable, except it's from Git master, so it's even more horrendously broken. 
The way we do this is with a whole bunch of technology. Uh, probably 10 years ago, I started to, to, to stop doing packaging as, as we usually do it, by hand, which I found incredibly tedious and annoying. So I automated everything to the point where today, Neon is being built in a fully automated fashion. It is continuously integrated, that's where the developer editions come from. And additionally, we are also continuously integrating or rather optimizing the way we build tarballs into, into the final binary packages. So ultimately, I'm standing here and right this moment, our, our thing could build some new Plasma version and I wouldn't even know about it. In fact, I don't even care about it. You know. Ah, it's, it's not like anyone would notice if they have a new plasma. It's so stable and sexy already. Um, and all of that is partially quality controlled. It's partially quality controlled because quality control is a bit of a frickle thing. Um, but eventually I would like to get to the point where it is fully, fully quality controlled. Um, uh, what, at, the, at the backbone of this uh, stands Jenkins with a horrendous amount of Ruby code um, backing it up in essentially figuring out where are the tarballs, what are the versions, what do we even need to package, when do we need to, to ship it, and so on and so forth. Additionally, we have uh, an enormous number of uh, Git repositories that are being backed up by, uh, by some additional Python technology. And uh, these Git repositories are essentially versions that are semi-derived from Debian and semi-derived from Kubuntu because we don't want to repeat work that someone else already did. And at the same time, we uh, tightly coll collaborate with Debian to get what we are doing back into their system. So uh, we, we're trying to share a lot of uh, work on this department. And uh, the, the third pillar, uh, so to speak, of uh, the, the technology that Neon is built on is Aptly, which is essentially a very fancy repository written in the fanciest of languages named Go. Where's Neon going in the future? Um, obviously, containerization is uh, the big topic of the day. Um, I'm actually proud to say that I do have working prototypes for Snappy, and I sort of know how to build a working prototype for app image. So, bearing complications, I hope to have some sort of containerization with good coverage by the end of summer. Of course, more quality control. Um, OpenQA certainly is very high up on the to-do, um, as uh, it really helps with getting uh, the, the coverage up. Right now we're basically doing unit testing, um, a whole bunch of library testing, you know, uh, include testing, ABI testing, that sort of thing. But uh, libraries are only half of the software that we, that we ship. In fact, it is, you know, looking at the, at the code distribution, it's probably a, a, a minor percentage of the software. And we're also looking to adopt a new installer. Right now we're basically using the Ubuntu stock installer, which is terrible. Just terror. Oh, yeah. No one expected that one, did you? Okay, ah, we're done, finally. Um, I expect you have a lot of questions. I hope you have a lot of questions. Uh, if you want to know more about Neon, you can go to neon.kd.org uh, or visit on, on some social media thingamajigs, uh, and you can find the slide on speaker deck. Let's go, questions. I'm going to come down to the front because I don't like sitting at the back here. Um, yeah, I have lots of questions. I have one really big one, and I guess I'll start with that one. And it needs a bit of preamble, so I'll try and be quick. Um, back in 2011, we started Tumbleweed the first time, which was basically what you're doing here. Stable base, rolling stuff on top. And it started out pretty much like you've got right now. Good beginnings. And then KDE needed more and more and more. And the list of pluses that you have right now is stuff that you're effectively invalidating from the distribution. The bit that you don't want to be messing around with gets longer and longer and longer and longer in order to get Plasma working. Ah. 
how do you intend to fix that? Right. Without, sorry, just to finish the point, without going, oh, it's fine, we'll rebase it on the next version of Ubuntu, because that's what we used to do. Basically, we found this was a intransient mess that we couldn't avoid. We either ended up doing way more distribution engineering, which is the very thing you don't want to do in this, or we ended up pissing off all of our users with massive distribution rebases of a new base all the time. So what's your plan to avoid that? Um, so, so I think we have to differentiate uh, what distribution work is. There is foundation work, which we are sort of okay with. It's not something we can avoid. Right? At some point, we will need a new MESA stack, and at that point, we will have to get a new MESA. But we don't want to mess with GNOME software. If GNOME software, or if, you know, software that's integral to the GNOME workspace experience, if that breaks as part of Neon, then we don't care. But that's, that's where we are setting ourselves apart from distribution. Compromises that you have to make, the compromises that you're worried about, very rarely come from known. They come from the new system D, the new mess, oh, yeah. all that engineering stuff. So, sure. so then what's the point of Neon? If you're still having to make those compromises and you're still having to make them on Ubuntu, why not use Kubuntu? Oh, yeah. So Ubuntu has two things speak for Ubuntu. First of all, the long-term support release sort of thing which we generally agree with. Actually, it's three points. Secondly, we already know the thing, so it was like a natural choice anyway. Um, but the most important bit, and that really was the selling point, um, how I pitched it to, to my boss, is we can, uh, Ubuntu is a special thing, where with every new release, they basically take the core foundations, Mesa, Kernel, um, I don't think Blue Z is in there, but generally the core pieces, and they backport them into their LTS release as secondary packages. So you have to explicitly go, we want to use this, but you have the ability. So we don't necessarily have to roll the entire stack up to the next version. We can just switch the foundations if the need arises. So, so that's, that's essentially the plan. If it doesn't work out, then we will have to go with this very unfortunate uh, choice of having to go to a next Ubuntu release, which we kind of want to avoid, but if it happens, it happens. Why not just go fully rolling? Pardon? Why not just go for a fully rolling distribution? Trust, I mean, or why not partner <laughs> with a fully rolling distribution? I guess so, would be another so, question. I'm trying to avoid right, saying so which one I think the, you should partner with. The, the, there's two, two problems. First of all, um, as I was saying, we didn't want to mess about with software that we don't care about. Um, You're going to have to do that anyway. For the foundations, yes. Not for the other stuff but the other stuff doesn't break Plasma. Oh, it doesn't, but if we... Ch when was the last time GNOME broke Plasma? <laughs> then why is it working in Tumbleweed? So the latest uh, GTK release once again broke the theming, which completely broke all the integration of Breeze into, uh, GTK, uh, into in Plasma. It's not broken in OpenSUSE because the OpenSUSE devs found a patch to breathe um, to uh, incorporate. So um, yes, um, in OpenSUSE it's not broken. Yes, in KDE upstream it's currently, I think, still broken because we released obviously before um, the GTK, GTK release and cannot fix it in the stable release because it's a feature release. So, so that happens, but beyond that, you always, or at times you find yourselves that GNOME Bluetooth, the GNOME Bluetooth stack wants Blues free, and the KDE Bluetooth stack wants Blues 4. Um, this is actually a case that occurred. And in Ubuntu, the choice was, we're going to patch the hell out of the KDE Bluetooth stack, because in Ubuntu, obviously, the KDE stack was rated lower. Um, and that obviously pissed me massively off, but it also broke the entire thing. So, and, and that's a compromise, you know, on, on a technical level, yeah, okay, you have to make it work, make it work somehow. And we would much rather go, well, screw the GNOME thing, and it's going to be entirely broken, and everyone will know that it is broken, rather than, you know, spend time and effort on it. There's nothing wrong with spending time and effort on this. It is greatly appreciated, but that's not what we try to do with Neon. With Neon, we very much try to focus on the KDE aspect. And, and if other things break, they break.
But in this case, don't you just postpone the problem to the time when you have to rebase on the next Ubuntu? Because they will have moved forward again. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, at some point, you will have to go forward again, yes. But it's easier to do that while moving along than doing a two-year rebase after. It's not. Because it, it's... I mean, I've been doing this for 10 years, and I, I haven't seen an Ubuntu development cycle where there was not, like, in the middle of it, there landed a new X and everything blew up. Or there landed a new GNOME and it wanted a new whatever thing, and everything blew up. And yes, but that's... My problem isn't so much that at some point you have to upgrade. My problem is not with upgrading the foundations. It's so your problems with the Ubuntu development cycle, and that's what you've based on. It's distribution, it's, it's how a distribution composes software. No, it's how Ubuntu composes software. Because I agree with every point you just made, but it doesn't apply to OpenSUSE, as Martin's already pointed out. Quite possibly it is only an Ubuntu problem. But then why did you base me on an Ubuntu? You wanted to ask, have somebody ask that question. I, I just I, did. Right, yeah, no. I've, so I've worked in Kubuntu for 10 years. And we have made marginal progress on getting policies to adapt. We, we have made great strides at times. Um, when we originally started, Ubuntu didn't allow for, for any sort of feature update. And in, in KDE, you find rarely a release that doesn't include features. So you go like, ah. So that policy was loosened. And it was loosened again recently, but it's still not enough. You still have, at some point, you have to release the thing. And everything sort of has to align. And you have to make a compromise on how many things can you actually uh, get fixed properly and, and properly polished within that time frame. And that, that, that is a general problem. And it is a problem that I don't want to deal with as far as Plasma is concerned. And to another degree, what, we, what, what, what is really important to us is getting KDE software to users. So you're focusing very strongly on the, on the Plasma, on Ubuntu aspect, but to me, at least, it is only a means to an end. We sort of need a Plasma to like test Plasma and have like, oh, yeah, here's, here's a Plasma, or have something to show? The reason I'm focusing on that is if I look at getting the KDE in the hands of the user's perspective as an OpenSUSE guy, this is something we've been doing for seven years. We've been putting the software of KDE via KDE Unstable, via Factory, now via Tumbleweed, now via Leap, in the hands of users at the pace that you're just about reaching now with Neon. So that's why I don't want to really get to talking about that, because from my perspective, we've been there, we've done that, we've done it for seven years. We so have the, done it in Kubuntu as well. Don't, yeah. don't get me wrong, we, 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 so, we have been there, but you still have a distribution, right? And the distribution doesn't include that software. And that's sort of where the problem is. In KDE, we were releasing at such a rapid pace. Plasma has been evolving over uh, now almost seven iterations, and distributions adopted maybe half of that. No, Bec we have five six and now five seven. But not in the released version. You yes, have to we do. add. We have, no, we have them in Lee. Yeah, we do. We do. And so that's my point. I, I applaud you. I, <laughs> I love you all. Yeah, but yeah. Done, and so that's. That's the bit I can't get my head around with this, but skipping to something else a little bit, I guess, because I don't want to dominate everything. Um, but the sort of the other side of the whole story is actually the user's expectations. And the, the constant bit of feedback we are getting, and, and this is actually for both of you, is you're forgetting the users in this message, despite your mess thing of, of, you know, we're giving them what they want. We have one set of our users who very clearly want everything great and fast and wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we've developed Tumbleweed for that because we truly believe that in order to deliver anything quickly, you have to deliver everything quickly. Leap, we try our best to put KDE on top because we have no choice. The biggest bit of negative feedback we get from Leap users is KDE upstream is moving too damn quickly and forgetting about us. And that's, you know, you, have, you, you do have two very different sets of users. You want to make your software available to users, but right now KDE is forgetting about a huge amount of people. I shall, I shall answer this very quickly. Um, yes, and I absolutely agree, and I think Martin also agrees, there is a disconnect between what KDE developers do and what users want. And if anything, if, if Neon can do anything good, it is bridging that gap. 
No, by putting the pain spot right on the, on the KDE developers. Because ultimately, I'm a KDE developer, Neon is a KDE project. You know, if, if Neon looks bad, KDE looks bad, and all of the KDE developers should care. Stop. Yes, I'm done. Goodbye, lovely people.